This is Spencer for the MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by Daniel Day Kim and Danny Cho. Is that correct? We've got an actor and an actor slash writer for the, I guess, world premiered uh, K Town Cowboys here at South by Southwest. Um, I want to start with you, Danny, um, since you're one of the or the solo writer or co-writer of this. Co-writer. Okay. Um, what was it like in terms of shaping this? I understand that there was a web series that preceded this. Um, what was it like in terms of shaping it into a cinematic project and trying to put everything into it? Because there's a lot of characters, there's a lot of terminology, there's a lot of interesting things going on, but it seems like it could be tough to try and wedge that all into one movie. Well, you know, the, the, the tricky part was the fact that I had no screenwriting experience um, for the web series. So I just said, "Look, <laughs> I'm doing it. Let's, I'm doing it, and um, that's what that's what it's gonna be." So the director and I, Daniel Park, DPD, we uh, we just started writing it. The last episode, we actually went to a hotel in Vegas, downtown Vegas, and said, "We're not leaving this room until we finish this script." And so um, that's what we did, and that was uh, over five years ago. The web series and. The difference between that and to the to the film was that uh, there was more pressure, you know, and, and the challenges really were, was like it was everybody's stories were very intertwined, you know, and so like it was like a you know if I wanted to make sure that the comedy was there, but it's not a two-hour movie of just being idiots and drunk, you know, being drunk and whatever. Sure, right? yeah, so yeah. To, to 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 throw in the the, the other layers of, of the characters was challenging, uh, but um, at the end of the day, it was it was fun because this is you know we're all friends first before so that's pretty great and, and that's the reason why I mean we're doing it because you know to do a film with just a bunch of strangers you know it, it's it's different. I think you know, the chemistry so. I think comes through through yeah. in terms of your guys' interaction with each other. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of you, Daniel, what was your process in getting involved with this movie? Obviously, I mean you did Lost forever you did life io forever like this is very different type departure from that in terms of the independent film or something like that was it the opportunity to be involved with a project like this or what was it that attracted to you to this yeah i guess i would say most of all i was a fan you know i saw the web series and, oh really uh, wow yeah. that's great mm -hmm. you know I, living in hawaii for 11 years i was you know, <laughs> yeah, making that's true. any yeah, taste yeah. of los angeles yeah. or you know koreatown especially because you know uh it's an area that's true to my and close to my heart so when i saw these guys taking the initiative to, to do these web series i thought this is really impressive because so many people in la talk about doing stuff like but these guys did it and it didn't matter you know that they had uh you know little experience in their respective fields they they took the initiative and 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 wanted to do something great and so I said look let me help you in whatever way that I can if I can be a part of it um, if I can contribute as, in a small way I, I'm happy to and uh, you know if I can help get the word out there then I'll, I'll do that too that's pretty phenomenal and now you guys are here at South by Southwest uh, in terms of you know, the overall uh, completion of the project, you know, between the web series and the movie, what is it like for you, Danny, in terms of uh, getting to that pinnacle, you know, finishing the project, you know, actually doing it like Daniel said, and getting to the, the end point, and for you, Daniel, uh, what, what does independent film mean to you? Is it just a way for uh, expression of things that aren't necessarily... Um, widely available or what is it that you you actually go out of your way to say like I want to help you guys out in doing that gotcha. why don't you go first then? well um, first of all I'm, I'm I'm floored that we're here you know uh, it was a long process and I used to have a full head of hair before uh, we started the project you know but now it looks like an armpit so uh, that's the problem but ultimately you know it was it's it's something that uh, it's just it's just you know it's a ride it's a crazy ride I mean we the guys, we all drove here, you know, really? from LA. Oh, so we just made it to, to we wanted to experience it in, in, in a certain way. And, you know, so far, just, it's just awesome, you know? And, uh, you know, hope, hopefully we get to do it again, you know? And that's the thing. Very cool. You know, and to answer the second part of your question, I feel like festivals like South by Southwest are the last bastions of kind of uh, freedom of expression, you know, free from 
uh, I should say, less, a little freer than, say, network television or you know, big studio movies. There are a lot of other concerns uh, when it comes to what goes into making one of those projects. But you know, when, if you have a group of guys and an idea and a camera, that's all you need to say something meaningful about uh, a slice of your life or a slice of someone else's. And that appeals to me. And, and frankly, though the majority of my career has been on television, my taste has always leaned toward independent cinema. Interesting. Yeah, so it's not necessarily what I do for a living that reflects you know, what I like to watch myself. Sure, I, 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 I wouldn't assume, to, like, uh, assume <laughs> that. Um, in a lot of ways, this is a coming of age story. I don't, like, I don't know where you want to draw that line technically on the term coming of age because they're all adults. At, the, at least theoretically, right. they're in their 20s or whatever. Um, what were some of the influences for you in terms of writing the movie, in terms of coming of age stories or friendship stories? Or what, what sort of things did you look to and say, like, really like that? We kind of want to capture that je ne sais quoi or whatever you want to say. Well, you know, the web series I, did, I wrote in my 20s. And then so the, the, the feature film I wrote in my 30s. And I realized that there was a clear difference I remember when I was in my 20s and I saw a really hot girl with a dude. I'd be like, oh, lucky. Oh, that dude's lucky. But now, if I see like a nice coffee maker, I'd be like, oh, I want the coffee maker. I don't, I don't care about the hot girl no more. You know what I mean? So I think, I think as, as, um, as I hit my 30s and, you know, all my friends, as we hit our 30s, uh, we realized that uh, we can't be the same, you know, we can't be the same responsible ability less guy you know guys you know we had, you know we can't party and and not feel it i mean hangovers last longer now you know and and ultimately i think that's I a think, tough thing to say in a place like south by uh, south yeah, that's some experience yeah, from the last yeah. couple of days we, we've been partying hard you know just you know getting to know the town and stuff like that but ultimately i think um that's uh, what i mean kind of coming of age i think it's when you hit a certain uh plateau in your life where you have to you have to deal with the responsibilities of life, you know, and whatever that is, your job, your family issues. And, um, you know, I think that's, that's what I mean by coming of age. Uh, not, not like, a, you know, like kids turning into something else. Sure, but, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so. And I think what's so cool about this movie is that it's so specific in, in, in you know, who these guys are and the, the world in which they live. But because it's so specific, it becomes really universal. Everyone has a group of friends like this. Everyone, oh, yeah, totally, you, know, yeah. uh, you know, has a guy who's like Pedro or Peter. And, <laughs> you know, there's a comedian in the group. There's a thoughtful one. And, mm -hmm. and so it really is uh, a lot more universal that you might, than you might think. Mm -hmm. It's, it's interesting, though, that you talk about being in your 30s, looking back on your 20s, and mm -hmm. sort of like the growth of the individual. From your perspective, Daniel, as somebody who's, I don't want to say the senior member of the group or whatever, but like, was there anything that you imparted to them as you got involved with this process in terms of like, this is what I've been through because you've been acting for so long. This is what's going to work. This might not work. Let's try and do this. I want to help you this way. You know. Well, number one, I, I tried to stay out of the the way of their vision. Like, Danny wrote the script, uh, Daniel directed the movie, and I wanted their vision to be on the screen. I just wanted to help enable them to get their vision on the screen because the one the one thing that I realized from my years of experience, and I put that in air quotes. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to imply that you no, it's true. It's true. You, I mean, you've been acting in great stuff for a long time. Uh, You're not an old but, man. Uh, but, uh, but the thing is that, you know, you should really, they, sh they really need to enjoy this ride because it doesn't come along very often and it doesn't come along in the way that it did for these guys. It's a, a group of friends who decided to do something together and, you know, and, and has some success as a result of it. So this is very rare. It's, and, and so I just want them to do, do whatever they can to enjoy the experience. In terms of the actual writing of it, I mean, do, do you come from more of a, you said you were, were not a writer prior to getting into this, right? The only thing I, I had experience, I mean, I'm a stand-up comic. Okay. And so, I mean, yeah, so, writer is a relative. Yeah, unique, so, so. so in terms of what, did I take like a screenwriting class? No. Uh, but, you know, um, I helped write a lot of sketches sure. for, for even TV shows and things like that. So uh, Okay, so you, you did have yeah, some sort of background. Yeah. Okay, um, in terms of like composing this though, you have this large group of friends. I mean, you probably understand their personalities 
fairly well. What is it like transitioning and trying to get, you know, like jokes for this guy, touching moments for that guy, and sort of trying to balance everyone getting, you know, their part or their due or whatever? Because there's a lot of interesting, heartfelt storylines going on that you don't sort of like have one guy who's in the corner just like mm -hmm. comic relief or something like that. Um. I mean, out of all the guys, I think I have the the the, the least layered. Uh, uh, oh, I character. mean, that's probably fair, but yeah. there's still some stuff going on. In terms mm, but you know, for everybody else, I think you know it it, it wrote itself in, uh, in the sense of they're all loosely based on who they really are, and so all the characters, their names are very similar to what their real names are. Like Peter is Peter, and Robbie is Bobby. You know, and so. Um, um, and then I, I started picking elements of their own lives, you know, like, like for example, Peter, he's this big, you know, yeah, muscular dude, dude yeah. but he went to, he's going to fashion school, Interesting. but he really went to fashion school in real life. So I started like, so what do you make slacks full? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and so, you know, that, that started making me think about what his character would be a little bit more. Um, uh, like, uh, Robbie, Bobby, he's not adopted in real life, but, uh, he has, a. Uh, um, I did, he wanted to find his identity because he spoke zero Korean to a point where he moved to Korea, you know, to, to, and he still lives there now. Interesting. And so it was just me thinking about what their a core stuff is and for, for, for the serious stuff, for the, for the touchy stuff. But for me, I'm just, uh, you know, I'm a dirtbag on stage. <laughs> you know what I mean? In real life, I'm, I'm, I'm a grass guy, and that's what I am amongst my friends. So that's what I wanted to do, like to, to portray not, not anything special, but you know, it, I don't want to. I don't want to be like this is an Asian American thing or Korean American thing. I just like look. Aside from the shape of her eyes, we speak the same language. You know yeah, what I mean? I, mean, I would, so I would good, say, like, know? obviously there's some terminology that needs to be relayed in the film and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But other than that, like, mm -hmm. I really don't think there's anything that's like this is purely a Korean sort of experience yeah. or story. I mean, yeah. it's pretty universal. Absolutely. Um, for you, Daniel, what was it like going from having seen this web series and seeing these personalities and seeing this thing that you enjoyed to actually interacting them? What was that like in terms of getting to know these people that you had enjoyed prior to interacting with them? And for you, Daniel, when he came to you and was like, I want to do this with you guys, what was it like to have him get involved from your perspective and getting to know him? Well, speaking for myself, it, there was a, <laughs> it really felt like I knew these guys for a long time, <laughs> you know, like, because I have a group of friends like this, and, mm -hmm. you know, like, like we talked about earlier, there are certain archetypes that exist throughout French. Which one, which one were you? Uh, <laughs> I was a mix between uh, Bobby, I think, and uh, uh, Pedro, <laughs> or Peter, yeah, so I was, I was somewhere in there, but... Uh, but yeah, so working with these guys, and there was a, such a camaraderie among them that I just wanted to uh, kind of contribute in that way and just kind of uh, help help their energy along. And, and, and I felt really, really like it was an easy process. That's fantastic. Yeah. When I heard uh, Daniel was like, yo, how can I help? I was like, F fuck yeah, you know what I mean? Like, you know what it is? It's uh, the, the thing is, I, I guess in, in the a very Korean thing is uh, there's a concept of Sambe or Hyung, which means elder, but also that, that have been in the industry longer, you know, that is at another level or higher level, you know? And and to to have Sambe slash Hyung, you know, who, who Daniel is, to to, to want to support, it just makes me go, holy crap, you know what I mean? Like that's that's so that's it's an honor, is 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 flattering. And it makes me go, well, hopefully I get to a level where I can pay it forward. You know what I mean? So, that's awesome. So to me, that's, that, that's, that's what it's all about. You know, it, it's not about, you know, I go, guys, we're not going to retire off this movie. You know, we're not going to buy boats off of it. I don't it, know, you know. Who knows? Maybe, you know? so, <laughs> maybe so, we'll but, hit that zeitgeist. Who knows? If, well, you know, zeitgeist is awesome. Knock on wood. But uh, ultimately, you know, when, when, uh, when all, you know, Daniel, Steve Byrne, Ken Jeong, you know, they were all just phone calls like, yeah man what do you know what what That's do you cool. need and it was it was just one of those things where i was like wow it can't be this easy you know like uh, in terms of the the support you know sure, so yeah. so i was just floored it was just awesome how did you determine what you wanted daniel to play in the movie cuz i mean you don't have a gigantic role but it's it is an important role you do have a meaningful conversation 
Peter. In yeah. some ways, it parallels my experience with these guys in real life. Mm -hmm. You know, interesting. I've been down the road that some of these guys are going down, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> you know, if I can impart a few words of wisdom to you, this this is what I would say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I thought about it as I was like, well, let's see. He has this 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 chiseled face. And I was like, how many chisel face dudes do we have? And I was like, well, fair enough. We, yeah. But we need, we need, I, you know, and, and I, I was, because yeah. I'm not ch chiseled, you know, it's a big circle, you know, I'm shaped like a thumb. But, um, but the thing is, uh, what, what I thought was, you know, somebody needed to have some sort of weight to, to, to control Peter's character, you know, because he was just going all over the place. And I was like, Daniel's perfect for that. You know, he has that, you know, he can, he's like, yo. Don't fuck this up, you know what I mean? And, and, and I was like, yes, that's, that's what I want. Because if my face said to Peter, hey, don't fuck this up, they'd be like, yo, shut up, fat ass, right? But we needed somebody that had this kind of like gravitas and, you know, he brought it. Yeah, yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah. All right, so the film, K-Town Cowboys, premiered here at South by Southwest. Uh, what is the next destination? Do you have any sort of strategies or website or anything people can find out? Just please check us out at ktowncowboys.com for all news and information on the film. And cool. check out the web series too. It's yeah. still up on yeah, YouTube. Yeah, that's true. Actually, yeah, it's great. Um, and in terms of the two of you, is there anything else you want people to know about that you have coming up? Or is there any place, Twitter, Facebooks, or whatever, that you guys suggest people go to find out more information about what you guys have going on? Uh, just, you know, uh, Look for me on dannycho.com uh, or Facebook Danny Cho Comedy and, you know, you come check out a, a stand-up because that's what I do for a living. Do do a lot of traveling for that? Yeah. Oh, very cool. Come up to Seattle. Just stuff like Cool. Uh, and I'm on uh, Instagram and Twitter at Daniel, at Daniel Day Kim. Very cool. Thank you guys so much for doing this and best of luck with the film and everything else. Thanks, buddy. Uh, thanks, guys. Magneto can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. It's tight, don't even try to bite the sun. Mr. Spock can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. The board can't stop me, I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.